Hello, thank you for watching our video on assessment at Monk's Bath. There have been huge changes nationally to how we assess our children, as well as at Monk's Bath. This presentation will help you to understand more about how we do this. We will be looking at assessment and informing you about how we assess children across the whole school, followed more specifically with information about the Year 6 SATs. At the live event, Parents were invited to speak with teachers regarding children's work and assessment. For more information on this, please speak to your child's class teacher. Assessment is happening at Monk's Path all of the time. Observations are taking place, discussions are happening, and regular marking helps to inform the teacher of how much your child understands. Teachers focus on marking against the taught curriculum to ensure that your child can meet, and exceed, the targets in their stage. We don't just use formative assessment though. Each term we complete summative assessments. This will be covered in greater detail later on. Children also have the opportunity to peer assess and self-assess their own work. At Monk's Path, we encourage children to evaluate their own progress and ability regularly. Children use purple pen, which gives the activity purpose and a name, to evaluate and assess their own work. Data collection takes place termly and analysis helps teachers and the senior leadership team to understand areas of relative strength and weakness and put plans in place to enhance learning. Changes to our school assessment are based on national changes to the curriculum and assessment. The new curriculum is more challenging than the previous one. Children in Year 6 will be the first to be assessed on the new national curriculum, even though they only began to learn it at the start of Year 5. This has led to particular challenges with regard to backfilling new content and content which has been moved to earlier years, particularly in maths but also in grammar. Devising our new school system is slightly challenging as the government are yet to tell us the end of year 2 and end of year 6 exemplification of standards. This is still being set. We do have an agreed set of criteria for the end of the year, but this is likely to be amended as we are provided with further information. This is how the system of levels used to assess. Levels were designed to be broad and best fit, meant as a summative measure of end of key stage attainment for year 2 and year 6. Schools chose to split the levels into thirds, A, B and C. This is because one child working at level 4 could be different or have different strengths and weaknesses to another child working at level 4. Levels also sat alongside the curriculum rather than always directly linking. Levels then began to be used to track progress with year groups and across stages. Again, they were never designed to do this. The previous system of assessment focused on levels. It was never be designed to be used this way when levels were introduced in 1988, with Key Stage 1 tests being brought in in 1990 and Key Stage 2 tests in 1994. Our new system of assessment is measured directly against the taught curriculum in each year group. At the end of each year we are able to describe whether children are working within expectations or at greater depth. Almost all children are working at expectations or at greater depth, which is brilliant. Good progress is staying from year to year within this bracket. The new curriculum is measured against a set of criteria, nationally and locally devised. The aim is to deepen understanding rather than racing up a ladder of levels. Children will not be assessed as working above their year group. Assessment is now linked directly to the curriculum. The new curriculum is very full and challenging for each stage. It is worth noting that foundation subjects are also assessed in the same way.
there is now a huge change in the emphasis of the curriculum. It is no longer a race through levels, but it is about embedding knowledge and skills and applying them across a range of contexts and subjects in greater depth. It's not just about remembering and understanding. It uses the word wisdom here, but it is about greater depth and better application, evaluation, analysis and, and synthesis. Testing systems remain exactly the same as they were before. Children will be tested three times each year, although this may be slightly different for year six. Because of the new curriculum, we now have new tests. Reading, writing, grammar, punctuation and spelling, and maths. All tests that we complete back up teacher assessment. They do not decide the final result of your child's ability. A child who meets the Year 4 standard in reading is a confident and fluent reader who enjoys books and sees reading as a pleasurable activity. They read and enjoy a range of books, often talking about what they have read with the adults around them. They will be able to predict, rightly or wrongly, what might happen next in a story, and use evidence from what they have read so far to support their ideas. A secure child can discuss their favourite characters or events within a book. With encouragement, Year 4 readers will move away from their favourite style of book and be open to trying new and different texts by an increasingly broad range of authors. This is extremely important to help them develop their imagination. Secure readers will ask adults what new words mean or use dictionaries to find out what they mean and store them up for future use in speech and writing. Secure readers can explain what kinds of books an author writes, why they like or dislike them, if they are action-packed and full of suspense, or if they make them feel sympathy for a character's situation. Good readers may be avid fans of poems, plays or fiction, or love nothing more than to skim and scan through the facts of a non-fiction text. Secure readers will be able to read some of every type of text. A child who is working at greater depth does all of this, but with true enthusiasm for books. Always reading for pleasure, always questioning ideas, devouring new texts and authors, always collecting the clues in the text and thinking about what might happen next. They will read all kinds of books by all kinds of authors at a more challenging level. The best way to ensure that your child is a secure reader is to be, reading, be a reading role model to surround them with texts, from a trip to the bookshop or the library, or downloaded on the Kindle. Read with them, to them, and even for them at bedtime or any other time cuddled up on the sofa, even when, when they are older, and most importantly of all, ooze enthusiasm for the pleasure of reading. The targets for writing, which you have already been sent and can be found in the children's books, will give you detail of all the expectations in this area. To be considered to be working securely at this stage, pupils need to be able to demonstrate that they can meet nearly all of these targets independently and consistently across a range of writing. Please, however, bear in mind that these are the expectations for the end of Year 3 and are not expected to be fully developed now. The curriculum in Year 3 builds upon the foundations formed by the pupils' work in Year 2 and in some areas then makes considerable leaps in expectations. In particular, spelling is a big focus and shows a big shift from the pupils' reliance on phonics and making plausible attempts at spelling new words, to a greater emphasis on spelling being much more accurate. The words your children are expected to be able to read and spell across Years 3 and 4 can be found in their organisers. In Year 3, we are aiming for approximately half of these words to be spelt accurately. These words include, uh, these include words like possession, separate, although, experience and accidentally. We do practice these on a daily basis, but children would certainly benefit from a bit of extra practice at home too. Year 3 pupils are also expected to learn and apply a range of spelling rules 
including adding a range of prefixes, such as sub, inter, and suffixes like ly, shun, as well as developing knowledge of homophones and the correct spellings of these. Handwriting also takes on a greater priority in the new curriculum, and by the end of year three, pupils should be forming all letters accurately. They are expected to know which letters can be joined and be putting this into practice in all their written work. Both handwriting and spelling are an integral part of the assessment in writing, whereas under the old assessment system, they carried very little weight in. When composing their own pieces of writing, Year 3 pupils are expected to use three main components of planning – drafting and writing, and finally, editing and evaluating across a wide range of genres – fiction, poetry and non-fiction – and apply these when, working, when recording their work in other areas of the curriculum too. Basic punctuation from the Year 2 curriculum – capital letters, full stops, exclamation marks, question marks and commas for lists – should be securely applied in all writing and pupils are also introduced to the use of apostrophes for contractions and the use of inverted commas for speech. They also need to be able to use, for different te be able to use different tenses c confidently, a and an accurately, and a range of adverbial phrases for different effects. All writing should be organised into paragraphs with the use of subheadings and other organisational features where appropriate. They should also be familiar with the use of dictionaries and thesauruses to help them edit and improve their language choice and spelling. Correct grammar terms are used in all lessons with your children and they are expected to use and understand them as well and be able to talk about these features in their own writing and be able to find them in texts they read too. For those pupils who are working beyond the expectations for Year 3 and are showing an understanding at greater depth, they will be able to demonstrate the ability to apply the expected standards at Year 3 with greater independence and across all types of writing. Their writing will show a natural flair and flow, and they will be able to manipulate sentences for effect. For example, use adverbial phrases in different parts of a sentence to create different feelings and emphasis emphasises to their writing, often replicating the styles of quality authors that they have read. Spelling and punctuation will be accurate throughout their work, and they can apply the new spelling learned to dictation exercises. Their narrative writing will be more detailed, with more developed ideas for plot and characterisation, and pupils will also naturally edit and revise their own work without prompting. This slide shows the Stage 5 Mathematics Assessment Criteria. As you can see, Maths has had a huge step up, with children now being asked to do more and more. By the end of Year 4, children are expected to know all of their times tables fluently up to 12 times 12. This is not chanting 2, 4, 6, 8, but knowing that 5 times 7 is 35, and retrieving the facts from this statement such as 35 divided by 7 is 5. The quality marking at Monk's Path really does support your child's progress. It also enables teachers to rethink planning and understand where to take children next in their learning. Children are then given time to go back through their work, read the teacher's comments and respond accordingly. As we mentioned earlier, children then use purple pens to self-assess their work. This ensures that they have thought about the task and that they know exactly what they need to work on to become an expert. It gives each child a sense of ownership over their work and progress, boosting confidence and gives them an understanding that it's okay to ask for more help if you need it. Dates for the SATS test this year are the same as previous years. 9th of May reading, 10th of May grammar, punctuation and spelling, 11th of May arithmetic and reasoning, 12th of May the second reasoning paper. We do lots of work in preparation for this, supporting children with how to read and understand what, question, what a question is asking them, how to explain their answer clearly and effectively 
as well as running revision classes in school until Easter. We believe it is really important to boost confidence and self-esteem when it comes to taking the SATs. It makes a huge difference if the children believe that they are ready to take the tests. We make sure that it is a calm and peaceful environment around school in the build-up to SATs, as well as running a breakfast club, having sweets, playing mascot tennis and even doing the congra around school. You can help support your child with their reading in several ways. Explain the meaning of words in context when you are explaining something to them. Help them to retrieve information from a text and identify key detail. Summarise the main ideas from more than one paragraph and discuss them with your child. Make predictions about what you think will happen in a text. Don't forget to say why and use quotes from the book. Finally, try and make comparisons within a text comparing characters, events or other features. Here is some information about grammar and spelling in Year 6. Please note all grammar terms are contained within the organiser. As with everything, the expectation is extremely high. You might want to invest in a Collins grammar book to be used as a dictionary for terms in school. This is really useful for teachers, parents and children. Tense and word class are key elements. Not simple tenses. Present perfect, past progressive, present progressive. Even noun, adjective and verb are not used in a simple way. For example, fill the gap in the sentence with an adjective formed from the verb below. The test will expect the children to know and be able to use terms such as determiner, antonym, synonym, adverb, subordinate clause, noun phrase, fronted adverbial, pronoun, preposition, conjunction, all terms are taught in school, used and referred to in teaching consistently across all ability groups. The test is a summary of what has been taught and learned in Key Stage 2. Formal and informal language and tone for the appropriate audience is referred to. No longer are there as many clues in the question, layout or format as there was previously. Children will need to use their own knowledge for this. Spellings. Knowing and applying the rules of spelling, it's so important that children understand each of the different rules for spellings when it comes to the test. They need to have knowledge of root words and word families. They can do this by learning the key words in the organiser. This will help support them with their test. Please also try and use a high level use of language at home. In the books the children read, make sure you introduce them to new language. Some of, the ex some of the vocabulary used in the last practice test was excavation, banal, replica, gauzy, penetrates, cautious and wary as synonyms of each other in a sentence. Punctuation. All punctuation is used. Commas for a range of purposes and in a var variety of sentence types, colons, semicolons as well. Please make sure your child is familiar with all of these. Precision is essential. Spelling errors are not allowed on many questions. Many basic requirements to secure one mark, uh, for example if capital letters in a sentence are asked for and there are six, then all six are required. Please ensure your child knows exactly what they are doing with this. Here are some notes for the mathematics test. The equipment that your child will be allowed in their Key Stage 2 math tests are as follows. From 2016 onwards, the equipment list for the Key Stage 2 mathematics test is changing. Tracing paper is no longer allowed and calculators continue to be disallowed. Mir mirrors continue to be allowed for Key Stage 2 maths tests. In the arithmetic tests, Single numerical answers must be given. Answers to all questions in the arithmetic test should be given as a numeric value in its simplest form, rather than a calculation or number sentence. For example, 8 should go in the answer box for 3 and 5, not 4 and 4. Calculations written in the answer box will not be credited. 
in reference to the formal methods for long multiplication and division questions. For two mark questions in the arithmetic paper, pupils will be awarded both marks for a correct answer. If they do not give a correct answer, one mark will be awarded for an appropriate formal method with no more than one arithmetic error. Formal methods are presented vertically with separate rows for each stage of the calculation. Examples of appropriate formal methods are included in Appendix 1 of the Mathematics National Curriculum Programme of Study. In most instances, it is anticipated that pupils will record a single method and this will be written directly below the given calculation. Where the final answer is incorrect, the method mark will be awarded if it meets the above criteria. If more than one method is given, the method recorded directly underneath the given calculation will be regarded as the pupil's final method, unless the pupil has clearly indicated otherwise. The use of commas as thousands separators. Where numbers in test questions have four or more digits, commas will be used as thousands separators for the 2016 maths test onwards. Where pupils use a symbol other than a comma as a thousand separator in their answer, no marks will be awarded. Where a comma has been positioned incorrectly, but the correct digits are in the correct order, the mark will be awarded. Year 6 tests will be reported using a scaled score for each test. Each child's raw score, the number of marks they get, will be converted into a scaled score between 80 and 130. A score of 100 will represent a child who is working within expectations, roughly equivalent, yet completely different, to a child working at level 4B. This is being done because it allows direct comparison of results between tests over time. The Department for Education have not yet decided what raw scores will help map to 100. We should find this information out in June or July. As of yet, we have been given no information about the scaled score which will inform us more about working at greater depth. We hope you found this presentation useful in keeping you up to date with what is happening at Monksbath in regards to assessment. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact your class teacher or a member of the leadership team. Thanks for watching.